Do you want to have a more enjoyable experience gaming on the internet or streaming your favorite content? Would you like to have a way to proactively monitor your internet connection in your smart home? Stay tuned and I will show you how to do this using NEMS Linux and an RPI. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to monitor your internet connection using NEMS Linux and an RPI. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now, to get things started, we're going to go over with what is NIMS Linux in case you haven't seen the earlier video. Then we'll talk about what are the required items. And then we'll go about setting up monitoring of your internet connection. Now, we're going to go over briefly what is NIMS Linux. So, in case you didn't see the first video or if you're still not sure, we're going to go over it very briefly and then we're going to get into the guts of things and show you how you can set this up to get this working to where it's going to be a big help to you. So we'll switch over here to our Raspberry Pi and you can see this is the way I left it the last time we did a video because this is actually in production for me. So you can see where I'm, I'm watching all sorts of things. I've got uh, Gmail running as my mail. I've got some smart home lights. I've got my streaming gear as far as my Roku stream bar, my Alexa Fire Cube. Pretty much, I've, I mean, I'll, there's still a lot I've got left to add, but I'm wanting to make sure as I add things that we have this to where it's going to be the best setup for me. And that's the same thing. You're going to have to, don't expect this to be perfect day one. You're going to have to sit there and, and work with it a little bit. But this is nothing that you can't do. Runs on a Raspberry Pi. The more memory you can buy for the Raspberry Pi, the better. I don't know that you can get the one gig Raspberry Pis anymore, but you can certainly get the two gig or the four gig. They've got an eight out now. It depends on how big the network and the number of items you're going to be watching. So far, I've not noticed any issues with this not being able to keep up with load. You do want a fan in the Raspberry Pi cabinet or however you've got yours mounted because I did notice a significant temperature drop once I had the fan on. In terms of required items, I'm going to assume for this video that you've already got NEMS Linux set up and you've got your Raspberry Pi in place. Now, to help get things in perspective, we need to kind of draw out what we're looking at for a network to monitor. Obviously, we've got to start with the outside of your network, then we'll be going to the ISP, but at this point, we've already, in the earlier monitoring, we've already talked about that. So we're going to be dealing with covering the DNS servers out on the internet that you're talking to, the NTP servers that you're talking to, as well as whatever websites that you go to a lot for reference or whatever it may happen to be. The Where I've got the arrows is the parts where you'll need to get the IP addresses for. And when you have been gathering your information to get ready for this, you'll already have a lot of this or can have it put together very quickly. But this gives you a basis from which to start from. And you may want to add more as time goes on. You're going to want to find the default gateway or the where you're pointing all your traffic to, to your internet provider. If you've not heard of NTP, don't let that concern you. Basically, it's time sync or network time protocol so that you can keep everything in play. And imagine my surprise when I was going through my inventory process to get everything I needed to do this video that I had an NTP server that wasn't responding. Now, fortunately, my configuration had redundancy in it, but still, that's not something you want to totally depend on all the time. So obviously, I'm going to have to do some cleanup when we're all said and done with this. You can also see there's website involved. It, it's something could, you could be going to every day. It's something, it, not necessarily a service that you're using, but it's something off your internet provider's network 
that you'll want to reference just to make sure you're getting all the way out and back. These are just suggestions and to give you a place to start from. Now, I've already done a little bit of information gathering because I'm going to have to plug some of this in myself. Now, for example, I've got the default gateway for my Google Fiber Internet connection. I've got the public address for my router that connects into Google Fiber. And I've got some extra addresses here. That's mainly because of the way my internet connection is set up here at the house. So I want to watch a few extra things as a part of it. Now I've got two Google DNS servers and I've actually got a Raspberry Pi here. And the reason I've got it listed is it's also providing some DNS services. So again, I want to make sure they get everything ready. And this is where I talked about, this is the NTP server that is down right now, at least the last time I checked and I'll go ahead and get it entered just in case it was maybe down for maintenance when, when I last looked. So this is something to, this is just a starting point to, to get you up and running, but it also is going to save you a little bit of typing because I can just cut and paste out of Google keep to get this up and running. So what we'll go is we'll switch back over here to NEMS conf and I will first go add the group that we're going to talk to. And this is, we'll just call this internet. And then we will submit and we'll generate Nagios config because I want to make sure that everything's there. Okay. No errors were generated, which is kind of what we were expecting because if you have errors then you have to fix those before you get that. So that's up and running at this point. Now we can go back to, we'll add a host. So I'll go back over here to Google keep and I'm going to copy the IP address since that's the part that's, I want it's make sure I get it right. I'll just call this Google fiber. And we will put the address in there. We're just going to call it generic host. And one of the next videos I'll be doing will be dealing with the alerting process and don't have to do anything there, but we do have to go on here to max check attempts and go to 10. And then we will put this in the internet group, submit. And that's happy. So we'll go over here to Nagios and it's happy. So we'll click on deploy. Then let's move back over here to Google keep. And then we'll go back here. So you can see it's just kind of a, a lather rinse and repeat. But it's something you don't want to to rush and we'll just call it generic host. And some of this over time I may put some templates in place. You know, at this point, I'm still figuring out how the best way it's going to be for me to set this up and make sure you always set your max max attempts to 10. And I forgot to set up default Nagios for to be monitored by. So I'm going to have to go and fix that for the other one. And we will submit because I guarantee you if I go back up here to hosts and this is not monitored. See, uh, if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, this is where you can have some little faux pas. And we'll generate Nagios config should be happy. Now, just for grins, I'm going to put in that one NTP server that got flagged yesterday. And then I'm going to put its IP address in. Eventually, I will just go with the full host lookup, but I still kind of f figuring out how I'm going to set some of this up because a lot of cases, the IP addresses 
will not change for what I'm looking at. And then we'll go internet and submit. Okay, and then we'll check the config, generate it, click display. Okay, so everything is happy there. So now we should start seeing now, of course, Google Fiber is showing up. Okay, that's what I would expect. Then primary DNS is up. And I don't want to wait the 90 seconds. So let's see about getting if it displays the third item. And I probably made another mistake because it's not showing what I entered. So this is just ah bingo again this is a good example where you've got to watch what you're doing so default nagios and we'll go down here and submit at least you're not having to do a bunch of script writing and debugging errors this has been in in my brief time in working with it has been pretty straightforward so now if we'll go back up here and then host group overview. Okay, pending. Of course, it's it's just when you when you refresh things a little bit before it's ready, or it maybe has scheduled the initial ping of that device. We're gonna go ahead and add the another host to see if I can get this one added right. Who wants to lay a bet that I can? All right, so we'll add a host, put the host name in here, and then we will put the IP address, if I can cut and paste without holding my fingers just right, and default Nagios, okay, and we will go generic host admins don't add anything there but go down here to max attempts and go to 10 and we'll add it to internet and submit and we'll tell it to generate the nagios config no errors sorry you couldn't see the part no errors so we're good there we'll click deploy then we'll go over here and let's go ahead and refresh that. Go back into host group. Okay, so that particular server is still, the NTB server is still down. But you see the basic process to go through. And so now what this gets you is if you do have some sort of connection problem, say it take, seems like it takes a while for a particular host to come up. Well, when you've got multiple DNS servers referencing, the first thing to look at is, is that server down? Because if it's down, your system takes a little while to figure out what is going to be the next system it has to go to look things up to get you the resolution. So that can explain some of it. And I'm going to look at it as seeing if I can add a test to see if the DNS service is up and running. It's got to be doable. But again, I'm running with just the stock configuration to get things up and running. So this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. For some, just being able to ping it, know that it's there, and you go from that, that you assume that DNS service is up and running, which is a reasonable assumption, then that may be all you need to do. So again, this is where you can monitor just your internet connection, because if you do have to call your ISP, the more information you've got is going to help you, help them hopefully get it back up and working quickly if it's a problem that they have ability to control. And if not, it at least shows you some things that you need to look at. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.